What up? It's the rap throwback. Boy, Diz Megatron in the house. Soundwave on the line from Moonbase. What up, doe? Yo, yo. Back up in this. Yeah, kicking it from uh, the Moonbase. How's everything going on your side up with Cybertron? Yeah, just chilling, man. Just chilling. I'm ready to do another podcast here. What's going on in uh, your world? Oh, not too much, man. The uh, the little guy just turned six months. Nice. Um, Congrats. You've been a dad for six months. Yeah, word, man. Seems like forever, but it's really just a blip. That one by time. Crazy. Yeah, it did. But uh, other than that, not too much. Just working, following uh, football as close as I can. And yeah. The Super Bowl halftime show. Did you see that? Dr. Dre on it. Yeah. Dr. Mm-hmm. Dre, and it looks like he's he's bringing Snoop, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Hmm. Oh, and Mary J. Blige. Right. Mary J. is going to be on there. Yeah, I think they but, can make uh, it work. Yeah, man, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, they get, like, what, 15 minutes for halftime or something like that? 12 minutes? Uh, I thought it was, like, 20, wasn't it? Is it 20? It seems like it's longer on the Super Bowl than it is for other games. I don't know. That's a lot of star power there for a short yeah. amount of time. Yeah, pretty dope. And, yeah, I wonder if uh, somebody's got to be dropping new music, I would imagine. Mm, hopefully Dr. Dre. Dre or Snoop. Yeah, hopefully Dre. That's what I'm saying. Well. But, uh, yeah, man. I guess uh, that kind of brings us around to uh, the album we're going to do today. Yes, sir. We're going to do uh, Kendrick Lamar's Damn album. Yeah. And uh, this is kind of, um, you know, out, out of our realm of comfort, I guess. Uh, we don't, I don't listen to him a lot. I don't think you do either. No, this uh, is uh, the first time I really listened to the guy. Nice. So, um, you know, Compton artist, Dre discovered him. You know, we don't know a whole lot about his past and, um, you know, how he's kind of came up in the music industry, but um, it'll be fun to go through the album. Yeah. And shit, man, we'll just, we'll figure it out as we're going along. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting concept. You know, he's got the, hit the cover of it just has damn with him on yeah. the cover in front of a brick wall. It's like damn period. Yep. Very simple. Very, I guess, straight to the point. Yeah. And all the, all the songs are just like all caps with the period. Yeah, I didn't. I did I noticed that, but didn't really put that together with the album title. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he has a song named "Damn" on here either. I didn't. I don't know the what the concept or his idea was behind the record. So I'm going into yeah. this completely like blind and everything. So. So from what I know is that um, this is kind of kind of a a inner battle of emotions for Kendrick. It's like, is it wickedness? Is it weakness? He kind of has that, like it's thrown out at the very beginning of the album. Um, And kind of, he goes through this long story throughout the album. And, you know, a lot of it you can attribute to choices that he's made that could either be weakness or wickedness. Um, There's some like, What's the word I'm looking for here? Um, like good versus evil elements in there. Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of it is just kind of like his inner demon that he's going through and kind of how he grew up, how he got there, and coming out of it is hmm. kind of the gist that I got. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Um, this is like his second album on Aftermath? Third? Okay. I think it's his third. Good Kid, Mad City, that was on Aftermath. And then To Pimp a Butterfly, that was also Aftermath. So this is the third on Aftermath. Well, I've never heard any of the other albums, so um, let's see. uh, 
I don't know, man. We should just get started and give our thoughts on on this record. Yeah, kind of um, a thinker's album. You know, a lot of uh, topics there to think about. I guess you know, it goes over current events and you know, just his own inner battles with religion and the hood and his own temptations. So, yeah, yeah. What did you What did you think? So, you know, the, in my notes here, I'm like just writing down a bunch of stuff here. And all in mm-hmm. all, uh, at first I thought, oh, there's too much singing in, in this record for my rotation. Um, you know, after listening to it a few times, I, I kind of got it uh, that uh, there's more than just like singing going on here. It, it's really a part of like a, a big story. And it's not right. like a made up story. It's just kind of like his own inner demons and yeah. his life. It kind so, of is almost like just, you know, an album about his life in a way. Yeah. And I, I think, okay, this guy can rap. Sure. Um, he's got some pretty dope beats. Sure. Um, he's very little lyrical and he's, he's pure delivery. Mm-hmm. Uh, his topics at first kind of bored me, but you know, I get it now. It's, it's just a, it's just like a long story. Um, so the topics kind of start sticking after a while and I'm like, okay, not bad. You know, not bad. Yeah. This is my unfamiliar ear to, to Lamar, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was my first impression from, from this record. You know, first, Same first here. impression. I kind of, um, you know, I I haven't listened to it, his albums a lot. I would say in total, I probably heard this album, you know, before the last two days, I probably just heard it five times. Yeah. Um, and then his previous music, I've just heard here and there. Um, I, I didn't listen to an album from beginning to end or anything like that, like this one. But from what I've read and what I've heard, and, you know, this Project Dan was kind of different than what he's done in the past. If the other two were more hip hop, more structured, this is kind of a special project, I guess, that he was putting together. But, uh, yeah, yeah, this is more of like kind of like conscious rap or, um, you know, topics that just kind of require you to think about, you know, um, everything from, I mean, talks about abuse and, shit that he's seen growing up, um, knowing how the hood worked before he made it to third grade and shit like that. But um, for the project, all in all, I, I like the style. I like the music. Um, I really like how the songs went together, even though they didn't go together, if that makes sense. Like the, the vibe was real atmospheric and dreamy almost. Um, yeah, I think the it, way the order of the tracks – nailed what he was going for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that was a, a positive to this record is that the placement of the tracks made sense. And, and you know, made not, the album go pretty good from start to finish, you know? Yeah. And, and not my typical style of music that I would listen to, but I definitely appreciate it. You know, this is not like a traditional rap album that you would hear from, you know, Snoop or, a dog pound, 50 cent, Nas, you know, throw whoever you want out there. But this was more of more creative, more abstract. And it was more focused on, I I feel like the art than it was a rap album, if that makes sense. Yeah. At this point in his career, he probably doesn't have much to prove and he's really just trying to get some creativity off of his chest. Um, Yeah. Maybe he, he has more flexibility to be experimental and you can tell because Dre's fingerprints aren't on it at all. No, um, not at all. So he's just kind of letting him do whatever he wants. I imagine, you know, there's like no aftermath fingerprints on this thing besides the label name. Yeah. I, it, that's it. Which I thought that was kind of weird. Dre didn't even master it. Yeah. Dre's a busy man. You know, somebody like 50 Cent would have a cow right now. 
I think, because I've seen him do that where Dre doesn't have time to, to make tracks for him and he gets, he starts tweeting. Oh something. yeah. 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 But Kendrick didn't like do that. In fact, it might've been his choice. I don't know. Well, I think, you know, those are the, the artists that survive are the ones that go out and get it done on their own. You know, Dre can yeah. have the best intentions for you, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to get your album done. And I don't even know if 50 Cent is doing things on Aftermath anymore. Like, if he came out with another project, would it be with the Aftermath label? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Does he have his own independent deal going on now? I'm he not sure. I just know single. when I think of 50, when I think of 50, I just think of the bridge burner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just loves, just burns his bridges, man. Unapologetically. But, but that's how he rolls. Just dropped a single. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I don't know what that's under, but I would imagine I'd be curious maybe. to see if 50 Cent drops anything anymore. You know, he seems to be focusing on his acting career. That or just the film career in general, right? So, um, yeah. He's got all these shows that he's doing now. Mm-hmm. And does Lamar do any film? Not that I know of. I think we're going to hear more of these artists after the Super Bowl. I bet. I bet for some reason they really capitalize off of that uh, that time. Yeah, that I think. Spotlight. Yeah, and that's what I'm wondering is who, or is it all of them? You know, are they who's taking advantage of this Super Bowl show? You know, somebody's got to. And it's weird that there is no Fifty Cent with them on the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah, uh, says a I mean, lot. Eminem. I mean, you're gonna see. Whoever you see on stage, you know, you're going to, it's going to, I would say, well, I mean, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, they have a limited amount of time. You can't take everybody up there. Right. But I don't know. 50 Cent's not directly signed to Aftermath, right? He signed to Shady that's under Aftermath. So it's almost like. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Two different branches below. He might be too controversial too, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. He is a bridge burner. Maybe he already dissed Goodell for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all cool. It's all good, man. I don't need all my rappers Super Bowl halftime show worthy. You know what I mean? Uh, shit, I'm just happy to have a halftime show that it actually has some relevance to me. You know, so much. Yeah, yeah, I don't good. even know the last time that's happened. Yeah, I don't even know if it's ever happened. So back to the record, I, yeah. what I like about the record is I feel like if I had to pick up a friend or a date or something, I could put this CD in comfortably and, you know, enjoy it and not feel like, oh, this song might be a little bit too gangster. Too hard. This chick <laughs> might be too hard. You know, we got topics that may right. raise eyebrows. You know, it, it doesn't really give me that, um, that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's an easy listen and I, I give it props for that, for being an easy listen for sure. Um, I think he's very lyrical. He's pure delivery. Uh, even, you know, some of the topics initially on first listen, I found a little boring, I thought, Yeah. Um, but they grow, you know, you listen to it a few times and the, the whole thing grows on you and you get what he's going for. Um, all in all, I'd, I'd say, I'd say it was a good record. All in all, good record. It probably won't hit my rotation of every week or something like that, but right. I'm glad that I have it in, in my arsenal now. Cause there's certain, uh, like scenarios where certain records should be played instead of others. And this one is definitely something that you can pull out and play like oh, at, yeah. at, a, at a party whatever or yeah i like pulling it out just when i'm tired of listening to whatever i'm listening to you know i mean you go through those ruts where you're just like your normal playlist or whatever you listen to at the moment just yeah you know you want to hear something different i think that fits it's uh that perfect spot for it yeah and what really threw me off is that this guy's from compton man he's not right where's where's that gangsta shit 
you know? Yeah. I mean, he has it in him. We heard it in a, a couple songs. Yeah. But, but uh, I don't think that's his like, main. No, he might be like, you know what? You're stuck in the 90s, bruh. You know what I mean? Or something like that. Yeah, I feel like he kind of is, you know, like he acknowledges it, acknowledges it as part of his roots, and he'll go there from time to time, but I don't think that that's like the main subject matter for him. That's not really his character. Um, there's something in the about rappers and the theatrics that uh, have gone a long way for me, and I'm not finding a lot of theatrics with the guy. You know? Yeah. Like that that persona. I'm not sure what it is. Um, He's more of a thinker's rapper, kind of. You know, I kind of think of it that way. I mean, I mean, there's others that are like that, but I don't know. For him, it's. Maybe it's the abstract style and then the content. I don't know. Something about him makes him different, though. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting record. All right, so the intro starts off with mm-hmm. that singing. It's got a cool beat, I think. Um, I I, I really like the beat. Yeah, I it, to it, this some about it grabs you. Skip it. Right. Which is it pulls you in, dude. You're, you know, intro. you're getting ready to hear a story or something. Almost movie like. Yeah. It's a really smooth beat. So yeah, props fun on a good intro. That's a great start. Right. But we know it really starts with the first track. DNA, DNA. I think is a great way to start the album. You know, it's upbeat. Yeah. You can even put it in the gangster category if you wanted to. But um you know, I, I, I thought it was a yeah, great way to kick it off. Yeah, it's a great way to and kick I, it off. It's pretty hype. Yeah, and then the there's... The bass really hits on this one. Get yourself there's a, a cool pair part of, of the song where he's talking it. about everything that's in his DNA, and then, like, he flips it, and he's talking about, like, all the bitch shit that's in your DNA. So he goes on, like, a verse about all the shit that's in, <laughs> probably in your DNA. I thought that was cool how he flipped it up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's pretty dope. Good concept. Good track. Next yeah. track. Yeah. Or is it yeah? Yeah. Kung Fu Kenny is his alien. Kung Fu Kenny? Yeah. Is it? So I guess before he got signed, mm-hmm. he was a lot more gangster than he is now. And that's what I read in an interview is that some of these songs hmm. brought back the old Kendrick, but I've never heard the old Kendrick. So don't really know what to compare to this song. I feel like his, his style on this track is almost like a very slow singing type of track. Um, it's like a lazy, lazy yeah. rap. But it works. This is one of my more my uh one of my favorite tracks. Yeah, this on is here, a good one. And the beat is it's got it's some backwards trippy. like uh it's a, it's really that's trippy a synthesizer or a bass line like, that's backwards, yeah. but he he's got a lot of backward elements to the to the album. I think that's kind of what adds to the atmosphere too. Yeah. And he's like going right. into it's not quite spoken word, mm-hmm. but it is some of that poetic style, you know. Like open mic at the cafe. Yep. Type of shit. So it's a cool track though. All right, next track, Element. Element. I like this one. What happens on Earth stays on Earth. Well, ain't that right? This is another more like upbeat, aggressive track. You could call that one Gangster 2. Yeah. Yeah, it does start off, uh, like you can feel that the aggression here a little bit, you know. 
Yeah. The beat takes a while to kick in. But I like it. I like the I like tracks that have a slow burn. Pumping. And, then, you know. and this one yeah. does. Compton. Yeah, this one's cool. I like it. I don't know what sample that is that they use here, but I like the hook. Yeah. The hook's pretty gangster too, even though it's like more chill. The lyrics to the hook are pretty dope. Yeah. Now I think that the arrangement of uh the way the this the the track, the beats well, he, are going on. You know, on this now that track, I'm noticing, uh, he kind of does that pretty, where like the beat dope. might be really chill, but like the content's more aggressive or like on aggressive track, the content's more chill. He kind of does that opposite thing every now and then. Yeah. It's a cool track though. I, uh, I give it a thumbs up, up man. Sure. All right, here we got the next track, Feel. Feel was cool. What are your thoughts on this um, track? You know, the beat's really mellow, but it kind of is one of those, I don't know, you just kind of hear all of the shit that's been pissing him off. And um, I, I think it was well done because even the beat changes when like it reaches the top and he's about to explode and then he explodes on the beat. But... uh this one was pretty cool. This was a well done track. Yeah. I like the I like the track. I think it's smooth. Um the beat I, I like the beat a lot. Um it's just one of those smooth oh, beats. Yeah. You can just kill it. And he's uh he's actually rapping a little faster on here. Um it's it's a pretty dope flow. Yeah. All right, then we got loyalty here with yeah. Rihanna. Uh, loyalty is cool. I like that one. I like the uh, premise. Yeah, it does kind of remind me of a uh, of a uh, what would you say was on Scribble? Oh, that, no, that was uh, DNA. I thought of, was reminded me of Scribble. Oh, okay. This one does remind me something yeah. that he would do or, you know, rap over those. This one just has like a really cool tough. sample. I don't know how to describe it, but. Um, yeah. But it's cool. Rihanna holds her own. I would. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Rihanna on it. Yeah, she holds her own. She doesn't ruin it. Um, and I haven't heard that much Rihanna, not on purpose anyways, to really give her a fair. I don't know assessment, but I know what I like, and I know that it sounds good here, so not bad. I'd prefer Rihanna over Lady Gaga, I'm sure. Then we got the next track, Pride. I like think the, about the, the start, start of Pride. I don't know what it reminds me of, but yeah, it's one of those old school like rock, rock band type of deals, right? Like a Queen record. Oh yeah, this beat is dope. It's, I don't know, man. I keep saying slow, but I don't know how else to describe some of these tracks. It's just an easygoing slow beat, but I like it. Yeah. And I can't put my finger well, on what instrument I don't know that who is, they you know? sampled, that but a, they took the sample banjo? and slowed it down. So I think that's kind of what's distorting that instrument. Oh, yeah? Gotcha. That, that makes sense. I think it's a dope beat. It's slow. Yeah. Um, he's almost on spoken word again, but uh, that's kind of his thing. You know, I get it. Next track, humble. Another upbeat one. This one's easy to bump. Yeah. This one's got the that that bass like, is killer, man. 
and yeah. the piano is some NWA well, right Pride or no Humble stuff. and DNA or have that upbeat crazy bass to them. Nice. Yeah, and this beat switches up yeah. towards is it the middle or the end where uh Almost kind of like above the laws murder rap would, you know, with the the sirens mm-hmm. and shit. No, I think you're thinking of uh, this is that track. You're thinking right? of Triple X. Right. Oh, you're right. My bad. My bad. Yeah. That one is the one that that's like three songs in one. This is the one that reminds me of a uh, like something that Rick Ross would rap over, which is crazy. Because at first it, it reminded right. me of like an NWA track almost. It's the bass and the but piano. Maybe it's that heavy bass mm-hmm. that takes me back to some rose. Oh. Huh. Oh, yeah. This I, is one of the I give the track a thumbs too. up, though. Lust. Yeah, this one's cool, too. I like the theme of this one kind of talks about the temptations and shit yeah. and um you know some more reverse beat yeah. stuff in it yeah this one is uh really he's getting more abstract here i think the producer is taking a lot of creative creative freedom and uh kendrick is uh right. doing pretty good over it you know Yeah, this is the one that totally reminds me of like a Andre 3000 track from The Love Below. Mm-hmm. Um one of those tracks. It like if you heard it you would you would agree. Um I can't I can't even pinpoint the name of the track though. Anyways, it's a cool track. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Some cool mod- metaphors in it. And we got Love. Which one was this one? Yeah. So it goes from lust to love. Yeah, which was crazy. I, I noticed that too. So, yeah. But yeah, it was just, no. It's not a it's bad chill. track, actually. It's, one you know? you can just it's, it's not bad. Throw in the car when you're chilling with your lady. Yeah. Um. But like I had said earlier, that if I heard this on the radio, mm-hmm. I I wouldn't even be able to tell that it was Kendrick or anything. I'd just be like, this is a, another love song that uh, sounds like it was made in 2021 cool or something. Going on too. It's a, it, it just gives me that vibe. I don't know. Any other yeah, thoughts on the really, love song? really. I mean, pretty basic, just straightforward. I've never heard of this Zakari guy, but I like the beat here. Yeah. Yep. It's literally the love song. Nothing more, pretty much. Love. All right, next track, Triple X. This starts off yeah, really cool, I think. It's, just, it's mm-hmm. got more of that old school rock and roll vibe, you know? But I mean, this features you too. I don't know where they're at in it. Is this you two right now? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see, I think I can tell you. Yeah. It's got some dope record scratching in the beginning. Starts off kind of old school. Yeah, this this is the a simple old school throwback with some uh switching up towards the end for good measure. And that's where it started oh, okay, reminding yeah. me of uh, like murder rap from above the law, you know, with the the sirens and shit, which is cool. It, it's just a overall good throwback track, in my opinion. Yeah, it switches things up quite a bit too. Um, what do you think? I think U two has a yeah. couple of cameos in it, not too many. Just a couple lines. I think they do the chorus, but uh, yeah, this one's like. One of those, he starts off like passive aggressive. Yeah, there you go. And then it picks up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does pick up. That's when you start getting those siren like sounds. 
It's cool. Yeah. Right, then we got Fear. Fear, another one of those chill, kind of like depressing tracks. This is the... Uh... Yeah, it's a slow, it's a slow mm-hmm. track. But I, I like the placement of the track, though. You know, it's like towards the end of the record. Gives you a chance to kind of decompress everything that you've taken in. Just kind of chill. Yeah. It keeps it from getting exhausting, I think. A lot this, of records start to get exhausting. Uh, this was the track where we have the three different stories of things that changed his life from 7, 17, and 27. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, Another thing I noticed on this beat mm. is that it's the same sample they used on um, Red, no. Is it Life After Death on Biggie's album, Somebody's Gotta Die? Just can't really, oh, really? hear it wow. here, but like in the middle of the song, you'll hear uh, kind of like the violin stuff kick in i don't know if we'll get to it while we're going over it here but um yeah samples the same track it's pretty cool it's dope it's pretty interesting i like the the background i don't i guess they're not completely background vocals but they have that background effect you know that was all backwards too so i mean i want to flip that around and see what he says there there's a part of that song that's all backwards then we got god Second to the last track here. Pretty cool track. What are your thoughts here? I dig it. It's talking about a lot of things that make him feel like a god. Yelling, yeah. aha. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind it's of a cool track. uplifting in a way. A lot of singing. He does rap a bit. Yeah. No, it's pretty chill. Pretty chill. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the hook. Mm-hmm. So then we got Duckworth, the final track. Yeah, right? Duckworth. One that one was out. crazy because it tells a story of Kendrick Lamar. Um. I guess um, a robbery went down before his time that his dad was involved in with the producer Top Dog here. Yeah. Top Dog robbed a restaurant that his dad worked at, and I guess his dad talked him out of killing him. And Kendrick was born after, and Top Dog created his own record label, and then they linked up coincidentally and... That's how his career started. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. Small world. Yeah. Coincidences right? or God shots or whatever, yeah. man. They were both placed at the at a certain point of time in a certain place. I don't know. You're well, like, and it's it's wow. Well, yeah. I mean, it kind of you go back to like Kendrick wasn't even born yet. This is a situation between his dad and a stranger at the time. Wild. Yeah, man. I like the way that, that he writes it. Um, you know, you, the way he talks about it and everything, it was just, it was just dope. So it's a cool way to end the, the album, you know, kind of gives you the yeah. rundown of all of it. It's, it's something special. It's, it's cool. It's not a lot of tracks like this that I can remember even, you know? So, yeah, I mean, the story in itself dope. is amazing, but it was cool to hear it in a, the form of a song. So all in all, man, that's uh, that's the record damn. Damn, period. Damn. Yeah. Overall thoughts? Well, overall, you know, I, I like the album as a whole, as a project, as a piece of art um i don't know if i can really compare this to traditional rap albums that we've gone over yeah to me this kind of feels like its own thing but um i respect it and i dig it man 
like I kind of want to go back and check out his other albums and kind of see, you know, what those sound like. But uh, in whole, I, I'm a fan of this project. I dig it. I can bump it all the way through without skipping anything. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm digging it. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, from start to finish, it's, uh, it doesn't have skippables. Um, you know, it's got it's got a couple slower tracks, but they're mm-hmm. they're still tolerable, honestly. Um, they hold their place on the on the album, though. They just kind they, of yeah. I don't know they're placed where they need to be. Yeah, I think the placement of these tracks are intentional, and they do the job. Um, I think it tells a whole story. It makes you feel like you listen to like a movie almost. It's one of those records, mm-hmm. start to finish. The tracks are perfectly placed, and it ends up like a big story or a movie being told by the time it's said and done. Right. Um, now, this one, like you said, is different than a lot of the other albums that we normally like listen to or, or talked about. I think it has its place, though. Uh, like I was saying, or I've said before, that you know I could pick up a date and listen to this record, or you know have my, my parents in the car and the record just plays mm-hmm. over and there's nothing that's like absurd or like eyebrow raising. Um, it's just a smooth record from start to finish. He's uh there's nothing too controversial. Um, you know, there's not a lot of theatrics that go with Kendrick. It's like he's pure lyrics, pure flow. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, there's not a lot of theatrics that go with the guy. It's like he doesn't have like this gangsta persona like like MC8 has had for ages or DJ Quick. Um even like Hutch, these guys that have like this background story that go with them, like the drama right. and all of that shit, you know, that that you kind of take with it. Um yeah, like, like, like completely separate from all of that, like on the outside. And I don't know if that's by choice or that's just the way he is, but yeah, I mean, he doesn't really just cling on to that side of him. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we may just be old, old school cats at this point who are used to the 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 drama in rap. You know, I mean, we grew up in the the death row, ruthless Biggie Pac. That's era, true. You know, this could be just rap evolving to yeah. bring up different subject matter. So like he but, has like no real stable, um, he's got no real rivalries. Mm-hmm. All he has is his thoughts here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's unique. He's not really attached to to anything. He's just kind of his own dude. Yeah, doing his own thing, staying in his own lane. Yeah, yeah, I can appreciate it. You know, what do you think are the standout tracks here? Well, the standouts are like DNA, Element. Loyalty is good. I mean, there's a lot of good ones, but I'll yeah, stick to those phrase. three. How about, yeah, your your favorite three tracks. Favorite three? Yeah, I'll stick with those. DNA, Element, and Loyalty. Nice. I like those. My favorite three, I'm going to go with Feel. Feel. Pride. And Lust. Yeah. Feel, Pride, and Lust. Nice. I dig those. I like some other tracks here, but I'm just picking my three faves off the top of my head here. And those ones, uh, I gave those some my favorite check marks. So nice. I'm going to roll with those three. Hell yeah. How do you score it? This one's kind of hard for me to score because I don't really have anything to compare it to. Um, what I do know is that I do enjoy listening to it. Um, <clears throat> I'm a fan of it. So. I'm going to hit it with an eight, man. I didn't really run into a lot of things that made me want to skip a, a track. There wasn't like an artist on here that was like, what the fuck? Why is this guy even on the album? Yeah. You know, there wasn't really a lot for me here to uh, criticize. I mean, there, there just wasn't a lot, but I think eight's a good score. I think anything higher than that, I don't know it. <clears throat> I don't know the album well enough to say that I could give it a higher score. I think that's a good score, but I think you like the album a little more so than I do. So I'm going to give it seven and a half, 7.5 
Periods is what I'm giving. Periods. Back. Nice. There's periods all over the, the track listing, man. I'm going to give it seven and a half. Um, it's a good album though. You know, not, I don't, I'm not trying to take anything away for it, from it. Um, yeah. you know, I, it's weird because I give it seven and a half, but you can listen to it from start to finish. You know, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, yeah. And that's kind of where I was at a fault too. You know, I, there really isn't anything to compare this to. I mean, it's easy to listen to from beginning to end, but at the same time, you can't give it a real high score. Yeah, you just know in your gut, you know, when you get a 10 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's good, man. Anyways, that's Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick you Lamar. Can, yeah, you can go back and check out his other his other records. See if yeah, there's uh, all, any gems in there to dig out. I know that uh, To Pimp a Butterfly has a couple gems in it for sure. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really checked out. I think it's um, Good Kid, Mad City or something like that. So I'll, I'll go back and I'll check them out, see if there's some any, uh, any other gems to check out and see if maybe his content's different. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool to see what the structure of those albums are like, too. Yeah, I'm curious about like the MCA and the DJ Quick tracks for sure. Mm-hmm. Got to check those out. The um, MCA track is dope. I mean, I know you'll like that. Just nice. if you're an MC8 fan, there's no way you wouldn't like it. Geo. Like uh, that track is is played out a certain way, and then like when it's MC8 chance to or his turn to rap, the beat flips and all kinds of stuff happen. So they they did MC8 well on that track. Nice. Well, I'm sure we're gonna get some more Lamar after the Super Bowl, man. He should uh, be on the radar. And hopefully, I mean, he's got one more project coming up. Um, yeah, we'll just keep him on the radar for sure. Yeah. We'll see what happens after that Super Bowl show. So somebody's got to be dropping something. Word. All right, dope, man. That'll wrap it up then. Check us out at rapthrowback.com. Hit us up on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, wherever. And our YouTube channel is growing getting a lot of views well for us check it out (laughs) (laughs) we got some more shit coming out oh yeah i'm gonna keep banging away at it so keep banging away. all the viewers appreciate it that's right all right man i'm signing out then dude this is your boy megatron soundwave is out